what we're going to be going over here is a direct labor budget. And we'll go through an example where we set up this direct labor budget and then we make our calculations to determine what the amounts that we would have here for a direct labor budget. So we start out with our master budget and then under our master budget we have our operating budget and our financial budget. So uh, following our operating budget down here we determine our sales budget and then from our sales budget we can determine our production budget and now we can get down to determining or calculating our direct labor budget based on production requirements and the production requirements are based on our sales requirements. So for the production budget here you're going to have your direct materials, your direct labor and your factory overhead. And then knowing those amounts you can determine your ending inventory amounts based on the production requirements and then you can, based on sales requirements, you can determine the cost of goods sold, and knowing your cost of goods sold, then you can determine the income statement here. So going back to our direct labor budget, we're going to have to determine our, our direct labor needs here based on our production, and then we also have to deal with our payments or our cash payments here for our direct labor, and those payments are going to be related to our financial budget here, in, or the cash budget here under our financial budget. So you can see uh, this uh, direct labor here is tied into both our operating budget, it falls under our operating budget, but we also, fall, uh, the requirements for the cash to pay the direct labor ha falls under the financial budget as the cash budget here. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with uh, the payments here that, first we're going to have to determine our direct labor requirements here and then we're going to have to determine the cash payments here for direct labor. Okay, so let's go over here and just look at uh, outline here of our direct labor budget. So first off, we have to determine the direct labor hours needed for production. So uh, coming from our sales budget and our production budget, we're going to have to determine the units that have to be produced here. And then we take uh, those units, uh, then we take it times the direct labor hour, hours budgeted on a per unit basis. So that's going to give us the direct hours needed here for production. And then knowing that here, we can determine the direct, the budgeted direct labor cost here. So all you do is take your direct labor hours needed here for production that we calculated, and then you take that times the budgeted rates per hour here for your direct labor. Okay, so we'll move on here and then we'll look at our example here and how we make these calculations. Now we'll calculate our direct labor budget. Again, remember these are based on budgeted estimates and we'll just look at it in terms of a single product. But you'd have to go through all your products here within the company to determine your total direct labor budget here. But we'll just go through it as a single product to demonstrate how we make our calculations. And again, we're going to look at it in just terms of a single month here. But you'd have to go through all your months of the years here uh, of the year here to determine the total direct labor budget you'd have to calculate. So we're going to be looking at it in terms of our month of March here we're going to have based on our sales budget we're going to have to they're going to be selling 11,000 units here and then we're also going to be looking at the next month the month of April here where the sales department said they're going to budget to sell 12,000 units so the next thing we have to do is we have to determine our desired ending inventories and for our direct labor it's we're going to have to determine uh, we're, our finished goods inventory is what we're going to be looking at. So in this example, we're going to say that our ending inventory is going to be based on 5% of the next period sales budget. Because usually what you do here, you take the desired ending inventory is usually based on the next period sales budget here. So for our next period, in this case, it's going to be uh, April, month of April here, 12,000 unit sales that we're looking at. Okay, so the next thing we have to look at is our direct labor costs here. So uh, our for our direct labor hours here for our input on this unit, this single product we're producing here is going to take four tenths of an hour and our cost of our direct labor hour or input cost here is going to be fifteen dollars per hour so four tenths of an hour here times uh, fifteen dollars per hour uh, is going to give us a cost output on a per unit basis here of six dollars okay so now knowing that we can go down here and we can calculate our direct labor budget again for the month of March here. So first off we have to determine our direct labor hours needed for production here. And this is really going to be based off the production budget here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the units that we have to produce times the direct labor hour per unit here. So units that we're going to have to produce in this case and we'll go and calculate that is going to be 11,000 
50 units. We're only selling 11,000, but we're going to have to produce 11,050 units. And you take that times uh, four tenths of an hour here per unit, you're going to get 4,420 direct labor hours here for your budgeted period here for March. Okay, so let's go and let's look at how we calculated 11,050 units here. Okay, so this came off our production budget again for the month of March here. This is where you take your unit sales here for the month of March, uh, and that we sales budget was based on a unit sales here of 11,000 units. Then we add to it our desired ending finished goods inventory, and this is where that 5% amount here that we're looking at that we said we wanted here in our ending inventories. And again, we're going to look at uh, the next period here is the period of April here, 4-1, so 5% here of the 4-1s budgeted sales here of 12,000 units is going to give us 600 units here, a desired ending finished goods inventory. And then we have to subtract from it the beginning finished goods inventory, and this is for the month of uh, March here, the month we're dealing with. So again, we take 5% here times the budgeted sales for the month of March here, 11,000 units, and that's going to give us 550 units here in, uh, in our beginning finished goods inventory. So subtracting that from our amounts above here, we're going to come up with the units that have to be produced here for 3-1 is 11,050 units. Remember, our sales are budgeting to sell only 11,000 units, but because we have to take care of our desired ending and beginning inventories here, we're going to have the units we're actually going to have to produce is 11,050 units. Okay, so going back up here for our direct hours needed for production, we take those production numbers here of 11,050 units again times four tenths of an hour here per unit. That's going to give us 4,420 direct labor hours as we talked about before here, calculated. So the next thing we have to do is we have to determine our budget of direct labor cost here. So we take the direct labor hours that we needed here, that 4,420 direct labor hours here, and we take it times the cost here per direct labor hour. In this case, it's $15 per direct labor hours. So that multiplies out to $66,300 here. So for our direct labor budget, we have to determine the direct labor hours we needed here for production, and then also our direct labor cost here we calculated. Okay, to summarize what we've done, let's just go through our summary here for our direct labor budget. Again, we just take our direct labor hours needed here for production. That takes the units that we have to produce. Remember that came off our production budget. Production budget was based on our sales budget, but we have to determine our product uh, units that we had to be produced based on our production budget. And then we took those times the direct labor hour on a, a budgeted per unit here. So budgeted per unit. Then the next thing we had to do is we had to determine our budgeted direct labor cost here. And that was simply taking our direct labor hours needed for production that we calculated up above here. And then we took that times the budgeted rates on a per hour basis here. Okay, so that summarizes how we uh, set up and calculate our direct labor budget. Now remember, we did it just in terms of a single unit here, but you'd have to go through it for all your units. And then it becomes quite involved here because the units here are gonna re uh, re require a, a, a quite a few calculations to determine the direct labor because they're probably going to go through a number of different operations and so forth. But anyway, yeah, you follow this procedure here that we went just on a single product for the single month and then you'll come up with the idea on how you would do it here for multiple products here uh, in, in looking for the entire uh, yearly budget here based for each of the months here. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.